Hey everyone, it's Holly. I know you can't see me right now because I really want to focus on how to build this scene card, which happens to be found in the new Artfully Scent cartridge. And as you can see, it's these pieces that are up here, and this is found on page 44 of your hand handbook. So I'm going to walk you through very quickly how to build this pop-up function on page 44 of Artfully Scent. Now you might be wondering, Holly, I'm not really good at putting together pop-ups. Is there a better way to do this? And I am so excited to share with you that Close to My Heart created an assembly guide on all of the pop-up features. And this particular card can be found on page 44 as well. Love how they're tied together. So you can follow the instructions here or you can quickly just watch my video as I'm making the Halloween scene and it's going to look like this when we get done. And some of the fun things that you'll notice as I paper pieced behind the windows and behind the upper windows to make it look like moonlight and then I also added some fun decorative elements as well as the stamping. And I forgot to mention that last time. This happens to be one of the exclusive stamp sets that come in the Artfully Scent bundle. And these are all different phrases that are nice and small and they work beautifully with all of the cards that you're going to be creating with this cartridge. I want to show you one other example. This is a birthday card that I created and I'm going to show how to do this a little bit later on. But Happy Birthday was stamped using one of the icons from that stamp set. And then this is another really fun thing. This happens to be a gift card with an envelope and you can build both of them with Artfully Scent. And then just because you're awesome was also a stamp that was found on this sheet. So lots of great things that you can use. But let's get started here. As I had mentioned in some of my previous videos, you'll notice that whenever you cut something out, everything is synced and linked together. So for instance, the base that I'm using, which is white, is gonna be set at five inches, and it will cut the base for this five by seven card. And then the piece that I cut in gray Here's the white piece that I cut for my card base. This is the white, or the gray piece, excuse me, that's gonna go on top of it. And this is the pop-up feature right here. And I'll walk you through how to pop that out in just a second. But do you notice how it creates that nice border around the card? And then our little ghosts and our moon are gonna be popped out. And one thing that I did here to just give a little more depth and dimension is I cut just a piece of cardstock from the Scaredy Cat paper pack and I put it right behind here to create just a little bit of dimension and I highly recommend doing that with any of the pop-up features. And then once you cut your cardstock out you're going to fold it in half and I love how the score lines are already on here so that you know exactly where to score them and it just makes scoring a lot easier. And then I recommend scoring that piece that's going to pop out because then we're going to pop it in the opposite direction here. And it's going to pop like that. And that's what our scene is going to actually get built on. I want to just show you how I kind of crease that a little bit better too just to make it fold and actually pop when when we open the card. So you're going to just kind of crease that a little bit as well. And do you see how it creates almost like a shelf right there? And that's what we're going to build the rest of the scene on. I'm going to use this white piece of paper to kind of help let you see some of the pieces here. I cut out two of the houses right here. And the reason for that is I like to finish all of my projects so that you can't see the scraps of paper that I paper pieced with them. So I cut two houses out so that after I put my pieces on for the windows and the doors, you won't be able to see those because my second house is going to cover them up. So as you can see here, I cut 
some circles, I freehanded some squares, and then I love our bonding memories glue to glue that all together just like that. So I want you to just see how quick and easy this is. I'm gonna just pull those off and I just like to run the glue over the area that I'm going to be gluing. And then we're just gonna lay those pieces of cardstock on there for a couple of seconds, let them set. I kind of st staggered these pieces a little bit. I like to do that. Whoops, and I guess I did that the wrong way, didn't I? Whoops, we're gonna flip those around. There we go, that looks a lot better. And we're gonna add these little guys, my little half circles here. Let those set for a couple of seconds. And then you'll notice when I build my house on top of it, do you see how you can't see those? So let's rub a little bit of glue onto both of these so that they all kind of stay together. And do you notice how the bonding memories glue, when you put it onto your project, it looks blue, but as it air dries, it dries clear and then it becomes repositionable. So if you make a mistake in the assembly process as it's drying, can you see how it's starting to go clear? I can move it and it won't tear my project. Another great benefit of this adhesive. And look at how nice that is. So there is my house. It is all ready to go to be glued on to this piece right there. And before I do that, let me get my moon put on. I'm gonna just put a little dab of glue in the back so that my cardstock can set right there and it can cover up that open space. Just takes a couple of seconds for it to set. And then look at this adorable tree that as well as the house, they're synced and linked to all of this. So again, remember I told you we're gonna set it at five inches. It cut not only the gray piece, which is my inside pop-up feature, but the house and the tree are also linked at five inches and they cut it to scale. So it helps you build your scene so much more quickly. So let's glue that on. And again, in the workbook instructions, it shows you exactly how to cut everything out and how to glue it all. I'm gonna move this around so hopefully you can see this as well. I'll get the handbook out of the way. But do you see how they show you where to put your glue in the handbook? Shows you where to glue the gray piece. It also shows you how to glue the house and the tree. So we're gonna put that right here on the side. Sorry that you can't see what I was just doing there but I want you to see how I just glued the tree right there in the corner. And then now I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue right here to the back of my house. You don't need a whole lot. And you're just gonna flip it around and just set it there for a couple of seconds so that it can cure onto my gray piece. And if you need to, if you're kind of in a time crunch and you really wanna whip this together, you could even use glue dots to secure the house down like that. And it just takes a few seconds. And then now we're going to take this white piece because this is the base for our card. We're gonna fold it in half. Here, let me move this out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. You're just gonna fold it in half and again, there's score lines that are created. I call them little tick marks, but there's score lines right here on each side so that you get a nice, clean, crisp fold. And now we're ready to glue the card down. And I love that even after you build it, you can still lay it flat so that you can see how to glue it onto your card base. And again, I just love to just take a little bit of bonding memories glue. You're not gonna glue the piece that folds, but you're gonna glue everything else and then you're going to, I try to find where that fold line is so that my card will fold beautifully when I go to open it, just like that. And 
and we're just going to kind of crease that a little bit there. And now I'm going to do this side. And then again, just lay it nice and flat. And that's all there is to it. It's so fun and easy. Then all the things that I'm missing, the only things left that I'm missing from this original card are adding just a few little embellishments. I used our white stars, some of the bitty sparkles, and then stamped the Happy Halloween, Have a Spooky Day, right below here. So I hope that was helpful. Can't wait to show you another one, so stay tuned.